One fine day in September 1858, a young man was being hoisted up in a basket along the outside wall of one of the turrets, the Dorn Wetzlar Cathedral near Frankfurt in Germany, when something went wrong and this 24-year-old with a whole lifetime yet ahead of him very nearly fell 25 metres to his near certain death. The incident remained a near miss, but the young man, shaken to the core, felt compelled to contemplate his mortality and, by some margin more useful to the rest of the world, to consider better, safer ways of measuring tall buildings. In doing so, Albrecht Meidenbauer, then a recently appointed building surveyor for the Prussian government, catapulted himself into the history books because only two years later, in 1860, he wrote to his boss, the curator of cultural heritage in Prussia, outlining how photography could be used to capture and store information about existing buildings, the principle of what he later was to call photogrammetry. It took Meidenbauer several years to actually develop the technology that would allow him to put his theory into practice. The biggest challenge was building a photo camera that fulfilled certain criteria, such as a sufficient focal length on a wide angle lens, the integration of a coordinate system and portability. Meidenbauer was not alone in thinking along these lines, and while working on his invention, he became aware that a French army officer and scientist named Aimé Lossida was simultaneously developing a similar method he referred to as metrophotographie. Meidenbauer stuck to his project and in 1867 published an article in which he used the term photogrammetry for the first time. It is owing to this confluence of developments, not unusual in science and engineering, that both Albrecht Meidenbauer and Emil Lossada are today credited with its invention. Albrecht Meidenbauer's lucky escape not only tells us how one of the principal pre-digital methods for surveying existing context originated, but also what we used before he helped invent it physical, hands-on measuring tools starting with, at the very beginning, the actual hand and other roughly standard parts of the body, such as the thumb or the cubit or the foot. Then measuring rods, yardsticks, measuring chains and measuring tapes. What they all have in common is that they require a physical presence and proximity to the object that's being measured, which makes them all, as methods, slow inherently unreliable, especially on large projects, laborious and, as Meidenbauer was to find out, potentially dangerous. Photogrammetry, by contrast, used the rules of descriptive geometry to precisely locate individual points in three-dimensional space in relation to each other and project them onto the two-dimensional plane, which meant it could be used at a safe distance and on the ground. Meidenbauer's cameras went through several iterations and many experiments, while he himself continued his efforts to get the method accepted by lecturing and publishing on the subject. It took him until the early 1880s to get the Prussian government on board, but by 1885, nearly 30 years after his fall, he found himself head of the Royal Prussian Photogrammetric Institute, the Königliche Preußische Messbildanstalt, which was the first institution dedicated to photogrammetry in the world. Meidenbauer continued developing his technology and by 1920 the institute is estimated to have generated some 20,000 photoplates documenting in excess of 2,600 architectural objects the majority of them in Prussia, but some also in the rest of Germany and abroad. This, the documentation and thus preservation of historically significant buildings, was a particular concern of Meidenbauer's. In the mid-1890s, he proposed the establishment of a German cultural heritage archive using photogrammetry. 
he cautioned that whatever buildings and memorials of significance survived the ravages of natural deterioration may soon fall victim to ignorance and the rapid proliferation of roads and traffic. Was die Natur nicht fertig bringt, vollendet oft unheimlich schnell der Unverstand und der alles vor sich niederwerfende Verkehr, is what he said. Although prescient, Meidenbauer's words fell on deaf ears, and when he retired from his post as director of the institute named after his invention in 1909, aged 75, the National Heritage Archive remained an unattained dream. He died 12 years later, in 1921. While not all of his ambitions came to fruition, Meidenbauer did achieve recognition during his lifetime, receiving a couple of honorific doctorates and, in 1985, the German Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing created the Albrecht Meidenbauer Medal as an award for outstanding contributions to the development of its techniques. His legacy lives on in the manifold applications photogrammetry and its evolution, stereophotogrammetry, find in architecture, cultural heritage, topography and archaeology, among others. And who knows how many a young surveyor throughout modern history owes their long and healthy life to Albrecht Meidenbauer's own near-death experience and his inspired response to it.